Well, I'll show you what we've went and bought today. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if these LEDs are going to work. Uh, it might be too big. It might blind him going down the road. I bought a couple, an amber LED and a red LED for the stop engine light and the check engine light. And I needed to build a cable an alternator because it, the one that was on the cutoff is obviously missing. And I was there and I thought, you know, that's a nice little heat shrink assortment. It was at Fleet Pride, so I bought that. Um, okay, we'll go over a few things here. A couple of reusable ends. I got some 201 hose. A couple of 5.8s, quick coupler unions. I've got assortments that go up to half inch of the quick coupler airline splices and the actual nuts and ferro splices, but I don't go up to 5.8s. This, I'm hoping that I got the right size there, and I'm hoping I got a D2 governor because on the newer trucks, the governors usually mount to the dryer. And the older trucks, of course, they mounted to the air compressor. So I can use these original, the tank line and the purge line coming from the dryer, and I can mount the dryer directly to this compressor. So that's what I'm going to have to do. And I'm hoping that I got the right size here. I just know it said number four on the hose, so I was assuming that should be quarter inch. Let's just see. Okay, my guesstimation was right. Okay, and then here, we've got a ha I've got the filter, I've got the supply filter mounted. Got the supply hose plumb to it, and I've got the hose coming from the filter head to the lift pump. Uh, this had a re I used the original hose and it had reusable ends So I cut the hose off and shortened it up and it fit fit on there like a champ. I'll show you what I did yesterday Okay on the newer trucks. There's a little box with a Like a mega fuse in it. It comes off the battery. And it's got a mega fuse for the alternator This one has got a circuit breaker on it. So hopefully I see it on the, I, I downloaded a, an older, this 1995, I ordered, ordered, or I downloaded a wiring schematic for it. And this is the circuit breaker for the alternator, not, but it doesn't tell me the amperage on the circuit breaker. So hopefully this alternator doesn't put out so much current that it's just gonna trip this breaker all the time. But I decided to do away with that box and it was simplify things and clean things up because that just added to the complexity and the gaggle of wires down here. Then that box goes up here and then the wire, you know, the wire come off, the so power on the ground come up to, to, well, the ground doesn't do that. The ground comes from here and goes somewhere else. But, oh yeah, the ground comes from here and goes over to the alternator. Um... And then the power comes up to the box where that mega fuse is, then it goes over to the alternator. So anyway, I thought, you know, let's just use the circuit breaker that's already on here. And uh, we'll come up from here. We'll come up from here, go across uh, with one cable. And I think a, a simpler way to do that is, um, I've seen them done before. Some of the older trucks used to do that way all the time, you know. I don't see a ground stud on this alternator. I think the easy way to do it is use the ground on one of these bolts and then ground it. Let's see if we can find something here. Yeah, there's a there's a bolt on the frame. We can ground it here or something. I just don't see the sense in running another whole set of cables all the way over there and tying it onto the to the battery or the not the battery or the uh, starter post. It just it just would simplify things to me to run it here to a ground source on the frame and ground the alternator. And then when you change the alternator, you just pull the bun bolt off and let the cable flop down. And I'm just now seeing something else here that I didn't notice before. What is missing there? What the hell is that? There's a giant O-ring boss type plug missing out of the 
Ah, man. This guy robbed so many parts and screwed us over so bad on stuff. I, every time I turn around, I find something else that he stole off the engine and robbed out of it. I'd like to find him and just kick him right in the dick. I really would. I gotta figure out that part now. I gotta get a, a heater valve for the other side, but I'm making progress. We're trying to get things done. Um, hmm. Okay, where do I start? Well, guys, we need to build a cable. First thing we're gonna do is crimp one end, maybe the alternator end on it, and string it over the sure let's see that's a single aught oh single aught that will go right here and where are the tie downs for this I'm actually come trying to think here let's see how that'll be routed must yeah we'll route it we'll route it along here I guess and up and over and that'll go right there and that'll fit on there so I got the right size there I got a, I didn't have any eyes in my assortment with the uh, well I didn't have any most of my all my stuff single on I need to get some more of these but I had uh, uh, some let's see this is single lot by a 3 8 hole in it and this one's a quarter inch of uh, hole for the other side so so First thing we'll do is we got some single aught cable, and I might I probably could have got away with number four or number six wire, but on electrical stuff, especially like charging type of stuff, sometimes the bigger the better, the more current flow you can get through it. Let's get a piece of shrink tubing. I bought an assortment this morning of that. Three quarter. I would like to get red because the only place, the only thing Fleet Pride had was, the only thing they had was black battery cable. And I said, well, maybe the way that I identify this stuff, that's too small, is I'll put a, half inch here I'll just stick a piece of uh, red uh, that is too small as well it's gonna be three-quarter huh hopefully that shrinks up enough is there anything else in here that may be in between size Three eighths. I'm gonna have half half inch. Man, I don't know. Can I get that half inch over that? Guess I could take a pair of calipers and measure the OD on the. No. It's gonna have to be three quarter. I hope it shrinks up enough. And then we don't need that long of a chunk. Maybe that long there. Oscar Meyer, what you doing, little buddy? What did I do with my dikes? Huh, okay. I packed up and went over and grabbed a bite to eat at the restaurant. And, and I put some stuff up and left some stuff out. And probably should just put it all up or leave it all out. I guess we're going to find out if this stuff's going to shrink up enough. I thought I had some more of this stuff somewhere too, but I decided while I was buying stuff this morning that I would just go ahead and buy a roll of this while I was there. Man, that's a pretty good... It's quite a lot of stuff to shrink up there, man. I don't know. I don't know. It's all small stuff. This is all the big stuff right here. We start out with eighth inch and then quarter inch and then 
three each and then yeah so on and so forth dang what if i got another idea right quick let's just try it on this in here with you Just too big around. It's not going to happen. Hopefully it shrinks up enough. brass brass end so we want to see here so we got copper lugs and you flip it over you got cast terminals on the other side so we want to go off this side here copper lugs at single aught it sure helps sometimes to put these in the vise and Kind of help hold them while you crimp them. Doesn't seem to be very tight, does it? Yes, it is, huh? Well, I guess it is. I just don't want that to come loose on him. It just didn't seem like it. What if I go just a little bit? I'm sorry, I'm just going to go a little bit tired. We're going to go four gauge. I don't know, it just didn't feel like it was squeezing it very tight. Right there, so <sighs> okay. Well, the starter relay is screwed up. I got the start wire and it click, 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 and but the starter works. I'm gonna have to get a starter relay for it. Hopefully, I can get one from Kenworth tomorrow. I just want to see if it'll turn over. Sure is out of gear. guys uh yeah i never in a million years thought it was going to start that easy i'm going to see if i can connect to the ecm i don't know if i got everything i know i don't have the J j1587 bus hooked up and i don't have the k-line hooked up but i have the 1939 hooked up which is the can bus
So I might, let's see. What's it doing here? New calibration found. Uh, we'll hold off on that. Um, I am in, guys. And we're going to have a whole bunch of codes. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. Let's just pull up this laundry list of codes. Look at all these codes. Oh, my gosh. Cool level sensor. Of course, that's going to be there. Multiplexing PGN timeout error or normal update rate. Ambient air temperature sensor circuit voltage love normal because we don't have one usually they're out on the mirrors on the newer trucks uh, Crankcase pressure data erratic intermittent or incorrect uh, Why would that be? Are these codes that were in this thing? Hmm. Let's just see. Let's uh, let's let's erase and see what comes right back uh, Hmm Let's see, reset inactive faults, reset all faults. Yes. Please turn the key switch off and click OK. So I've got communication and it runs. So guys, we've come a long ways. And I want to go to the live data and just fire it up again and make sure I got oil pressure. Uh, 70 seconds before allowing for key on because there's a lot of freaking codes in there. <laughs> I want to see what comes right back. That way, I know is you know. I don't know. I don't know how about if I can configure these modules out or not. I might have to have a, an ECM program specifically for this engine with no other modules on it. So I don't know yet. So these are the ones that are active right now. Of course, I knew this was going to be. So, uh, after treatment, SCR operator inducement data valid, but above normal operating range. I'll have to check that out. Everything on the SCR is hooked up. Okay. Look that thirty seven twelve up. All right, the engine protection torque D rate condition exists. Of course, after treatment, yeah, that's because well, that should all be reading back there. Let's check that out. Would you quit doing that and going back to the top on me? You dirty bastard. Amber, see here. All right, so yeah. So I only see like, I have to address all the after treatment stuff because it's all plugged in, so. Inactive after treatment diesel exhaust lid pressure sensor circuit below. Yeah, nothing's run yet. Okay, so all right, 
Uh, let's go to data logger. After treatment, I just want to see engine driver, engine braking, engine protection. Let's go to sensors, and that'll tell us engine oil pressure sensor. Uh, where are we at? Engine oil pressure. Okay, well, I got to plug this laptop in. It's about ready to die on me. And the whole reason I'm doing this, of course, you you put a new engine in, you, you got to hear it run. I know if it runs, and it makes you feel a lot better, because I, I told Tom that whenever I buy these, if you can possibly do it, buy a used engine from a junkyard, there needs to be, you, you really need to dyno it you know, to make sure it's any good, I mean, but they didn't do that. Or at least go see it run with your own two eyes, so we didn't even know if it ran, and he was, he told me the other night he was so damn nervous about it not running that he, he thought, you know, we're going to go through all this, and that son of a bitch ain't going to run, and or it's going to knock and bang, and so we're going to fire it up just for a second here and see if we can see oil pressure. If we hear any crazy shit going on or noises, we'll shut her down quick, but I know the oil's pumping because at first, you know, you saw me start a minute ago, and I poured five, I poured ten gallons in it, and in it, it was low, so I know the oil pump's pumping, so I poured another two gallons in it. Okay. again see if it'll there it goes might have something a little loose sucking air somewhere or something I wonder if we had a voltage problem These batteries were pretty bad. about 60 pounds of oil pressure there and then it started coming back down but so she's a runner something's ticking there i'm not really sure what that's all about but... fan clutch yeah, it locks up well it's just the way the belt is on it but uh, what's the oil look like on her now I need my damn hat clip. Let me stick it here again and see what she looks like. Nah, eh, she's about halfway up the hash marks here. Uh, 
All right, well, you guys know for now, she, she runs, she has oil pressure. Now what we got to do is just start, I got to pull these battery cables back off before I go home because I don't put this like this. Uh, yeah, that's a recipe for disaster and a shop burnt down and a truck burnt down. But uh, anyways, I'm, I'm very happy and I don't care who wants to make a negative comment. You're not going to rain on my parade.